Olá, espaçonauta! Pessoal, a gente tem vários vídeos aqui, e esse é um deles, né? Que o Alfredo fez a tradução pra gente, pro português, e legendou em, em, em português pra gente. Então, muito legal. Aquilo que eu sempre falo, né? Excelente oportunidade de aprendizado, né? Esse é o primeiro deles. A gente tem quatro vídeos para soltar para vocês e, e a gente vai soltar neles durante o dia aí, até o dia de amanhã, a gente vai soltando aí para vocês, tá certo? Esse primeiro vídeo aqui, é ainda falando sobre repercutindo o pouso na Lua, o pouso lunar aí do Blue Ghost, da Firefly, e é muito bacana, o Alfredo foi muito perspicaz em mandar esse material para a gente, porque ele faz uma análise, lembra aquele negócio das, dos três sensores que... que que acusaram, ficou faltando um sensor de uma das patas da, da nave ali, acusar o toque. Então ele faz uma análise completa do pouso, é bem bacana. Tá certo? Vamos lá então pra gente ver. Ah, peraí. Antes disso, aquele super salve pro Alfredo, né? Grande colaborador aqui do canal. Nos ajuda, nos traz todo esse conhecimento. Né? Então olha só o tanto que o Alfredo trabalha voluntariamente e ajuda a gente no canal aí. Então vamos mandar aquele grande abraço e um agradecimento aí pro, pro Alfredo, que é fantástico, ele contribui demais com o canal e com o nosso aprendizado, não é mesmo? Então vamos lá, vamos assistir esse vídeo primeiro aí. A few days ago, Firefly Aerospace successfully landed on the moon with its privately built Blue Ghost Lunar Lander. Well, initially, we only got a few images after it had touched down on the moon, Firefly just released a new video. Here, we can see not only the landing, but some of the final maneuvers that were made leading up to touchdown. It also gives us a good idea of the speed and state of the landing as teams work to complete more science over the next two weeks. Here I'll go more in depth into the video, new payload data, the next two weeks, and more. The video starts about 50 minutes after the descent orbit burn, which placed the lander on its descent trajectory. Specifically, we see when the braking burn occurs, a maneuver that starts about 10 minutes before the scheduled touchdown. Here, the lander is using all of its engines, both its main engine and the RCS thrusters, to reduce orbital velocity from 1.7 kilometers a second to 40 meters a second, and position itself above the target landing site. Next, they show the pitchover maneuver. In the video, you can see the lander slowly tilt further to the right as it becomes level with the moon's surface below. At this point, Blue Ghost is just a few hundred meters from the surface, and most of its speed has been burned off. As it enters the final descent, the main engine shuts off and it uses the RCS thrusters to pulse as needed for control of both the speed and attitude. In some of the final seconds, the lander is descending at around 1 meter per second and is fully autonomous. While all of this is happening, the vision navigation system is automatically selecting a hazard-free target within the landing zone. After the mission, Firefly actually confirmed that there were two hazard avoidance maneuvers on the way down, but the software worked as intended and found a suitable landing location. Eventually, the lander gets close enough to the surface for the RCS thrusters to begin shooting lunar regolith and dust up off the ground. Also, with the sun positioned behind the lander, it gives a great view as we watch the lander's shadow get closer and closer. Finally, we see touchdown as the lander tilts forward and back again. The shadow also shows the lander settling and tilting to the right after contact. One interesting aspect has to do with all four of the legs making contact with the ground. On the official live stream, they provided a graphic with sensors in the landing legs showing if they were making contact or not with the ground. After touchdown, only three of the four landing legs were marked as making contact. Now with the video, taking a closer look at the shadow, it looks like as the lander tilts to the right, it lifts one of its legs off the surface. That being said, in a statement, Firefly said, Blue Ghost shock absorbing legs stabilize the lander as it touched down and inertial readings confirm the lander is upright in a stable configuration. This was something the company definitely took into consideration when building the lander. Standing 2 meters or 6.6 feet tall and 3.5 meters or 11.5 feet wide, Blue Ghost is designed for stability with shock absorbing feet, a low center of mass, and a wide footprint. In regard to the newly released video, Firefly Aerospace released a statement saying, After identifying surface hazards and selecting a safe landing site, Blue Ghost landed directly over the target in Mare Crisium. The Firefly team has since downlinked our landing footage for the world to see. A historic moment on March 2nd we'll never forget, they said. Throughout its 45-day journey to the moon, Blue Ghost traveled more than 2.8 million miles, downlinked more than 27 gigabytes of data, and supported several payload science operations. This included signal tracking from the Global Navigation Satellite System at a record-breaking distance, radiation-tolerant computing through the Van Allen belts with the RAD-PC payload, and measurements of magnetic field changes with the LMS payload. In addition, the company recently released a short video after Blue Ghost had landed of the X-band antenna being deployed. Here you can see the antenna on the left on the top deck after it was deployed. 
the antenna is on a gimbal to enable a better connection to ground stations on Earth. This allows Firefly to more rapidly downlink high-definition imagery and videos and transmit payload science data back to Earth. The CEO of Firefly Aerospace was quoted saying, Firefly is literally and figuratively over the moon. Our Blue Ghost lunar lander now is a permanent home on the lunar surface with 10 NASA payloads and a plaque with every Firefly employee's name. This bold, unstoppable team has proven we're well equipped to deliver reliable, affordable access to the moon, and we won't stop there. With annual lunar missions, Firefly is paving the way for a lasting lunar presence that will help unlock access to the rest of the solar system for our nation, our partners, and the world, he said. Besides the video, Firefly also released a single image looking down at the Lunar Planet Vac instrument. Here you can see it covered in lunar regolith. In relation to the image, they were quoted saying, Just in the last two days, Firefly's downlink data increased from 27 gigabytes to 57 gigabytes as Blugos continues NASA payload operations on the lunar surface, they said. Focusing more on the experiments since landing, NASA confirmed that instruments on board continue to be healthy and several payloads have already collected data. For example, the Electrodynamic Dust Shield, or EDS, successfully lifted and removed lunar regolith, or dirt, using electrical forces on the glass and thermal radiator surfaces. The EDS Reduster also demonstrated its ability to move regolith, aiding dust management. While data analysis continues, the dust instrument has fulfilled most of its objectives. These results confirm EDS as a promising solution for future lunar surface operations. For the second experiment, shortly after landing, the Lunar GNSS receiver experiment was powered on and began conducting their first science operation. Here they acquired and tracked global navigation satellite system signals on the lunar surface for the first time ever, approximately 225,000 miles away from Earth. Lastly, the Blue Ghost Surface Access Arm deployed the Lunar Planet Vac, or LPV, which was developed to efficiently collect and transfer lunar soil from the moon to other science instruments, or sample return containers without relying on gravity. Since deployment, Lunar Planet Vac has begun sampling lunar regolith. These are just a few experiments that have already gathered valuable data. In total, the lander is expected to operate on the surface for one full lunar day, which is about 14 Earth days. These first few days, however, are especially busy. The program director was quoted saying, Really, the first three days on the surface are going to be very, very busy. Our goal, like I mentioned earlier, is to maximize the amount of time we have on the moon, she said. The deputy associate administrator of NASA then commented, we competed this and we gave Firefly the challenge of working on the ops plan to run over the 14 days, these 10 different experiments. So there's going to be science operations every day for the remainder of the mission, he said. We can also expect some more great footage and images in the near future. On March 14th, Firefly expects to capture high definition imagery of a total eclipse when the Earth blocks the sun above the moon's horizon. On March 16th, Blue Ghost will then capture the lunar sunset, providing data on how lunar dust levitates due to solar influences and creates a lunar horizon glow. Following the sunset, Blugos will operate several hours into the lunar night and continue to capture imagery that observes how levitating dust behavior changes after sunset. With the hardest part behind us, Firefly looks forward to completing more than 14 days of surface operations, again raising the bar for commercial cislunar capabilities, said the chief technology officer at Firefly Aerospace. Just through transit to the moon, Firefly's mission has already delivered the most science data to date from the NASA CLPS initiative. CLPS has played a key role in Firefly's evolution from a rocket company to a provider of launch, lunar, and on-orbit services from LEO to CISLUNAR and beyond. We want to thank NASA for entrusting in the Firefly team, and we look forward to delivering even more science data that supports future human missions to the Moon and Mars, he said. Over the next few days, we should get even more updates from both NASA and Firefly about the lander condition and its various experiments. In a final quote, the NASA acting administrator commented, this incredible achievement demonstrates how NASA and American companies are leading the way in space exploration for the benefit of all. We've already learned many lessons, and the technological and science demonstrations on board Firefly's Blue Ghost Mission 1 will improve our ability to not only discover more science, but to ensure the safety of our spacecraft instruments for future human exploration, both in the short term and long term, he said. Firefly just released video of the Blue Ghost landing showcasing the process and incredible views. Even with a lot of work complete, there are still about two weeks left of operation before the mission comes to an end. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching. Cara, é, é, é de arrepiar. É de arrepiar falar desse pouso. A, a, a Firefly fez um trabalho incrível, principalmente por ser a primeira missão, tá dando um show, um show, um banho. E assim, é, com, a, com a falha aí da Atena, não tem nem como negar que a Firefly, de fato, 
é a primeira empresa privada a pousar na Lua com sucesso. Então, assim, a gente tem que tirar o chapéu. E o Alfredo fez também a tradução do pouso é, publicado pela, pela Firefly. Foi a um, um, primeira vez que a gente viu um pouso assim tão incrível. Vamos rever ele. Eu acho que assim, eu já nem sei, já perdi a conta. Acho que eu já vi umas 50 vezes, mas vou rever junto com vocês aqui. Vamos lá de novo? <risos> Vamos lá, galera. Vamos rever. Blue Ghost Riders, path to the stars is no longer limited to nations alone. Firefly is building the road to the next frontier. One mission, one dream at a time. Tonight, we didn't just reach another mission milestone. Together, we created a moment in history. Alcon, chief engineer on Ops. Y'all select the landing. Come around the Gente, impressionante, viu? Eu, eu vejo de novo. E eu me emociono novamente, é, é incrível, viu? Eu, não, eu não sei nem o que dizer, tá fantástico, né? fantástico mesmo, parabéns Firefly, parabéns Blue Ghost, que se tornou uma exploradora lunar de, de altíssima competência, né? e eu mal posso esperar para ver os próximos passos aí da Firefly, não é mesmo galera? Então ó, curte o nosso trabalho aqui, já sabe, né? pacotão youtubístico na veia, né? curtir, compartilhar, comentar, inscrever-se no canal, hypar o vídeo, tudo isso aí, gente, ajuda o YouTube a entender que o canal aqui é de relevância e faz com que o YouTube entregue ele a cada vez mais pessoas. Então eu conto com vocês aí para dar essa força para a gente aí, tá certo? Lembrando que a gente tem uma meta que é chegar aos 50 mil inscritos até junho, até o meio do ano, e 100 mil inscritos até dezembro. A meta é difícil, mas com a ajuda de vocês nós vamos chegar lá, tá certo? Isso aí, galera. Grande abraço. Até o nosso próximo vídeo. <música>